Hello there and welcome to another Hero Arts video. It's Michelle Short here and today I'm exploring whether mixed media can be clean and simple. So let's get started. I'm taking three sizes of the hexagon infinity dies and I'm going to cut them from canary cardstock. So I'm taping them down with some low tack tape and then I'm going to run them through the Hero Compact Cutter. This is such a cute little die cutting machine. I absolutely love it. So I've placed the dies with the cutting side up and then I'm running it through the compact cutter. And this, although this machine is obviously more of a compact cutter, you actually can fit quite large dies in it. You wouldn't necessarily think so, but it cuts beautifully. So I'm going to take out those die cuts there with the canary cardstock and I'm going to add a few different layers onto them for more of a kind of mixed media look. So I'm starting off with the tiling textures set. This is such a cool set. You've got six different tiles and you can stamp them so that you can create like one whole piece. So all of the the tiles as they are, the stamps, line up with each other if they're stamped again. So you can stamp them multiple times in a row from each side, if that makes sense. I'm not actually going to do that today, but you can see here on this honeycomb piece that you've got that edge there and that lines up with the opposite side so that you can stamp them multiple times, which is a really cool idea. My hexagons are quite tiny, so they actually fit on these just as one stamp. But what I could have done is actually stamped all of the tiling texture first and then die cut the hexagons and then they would have lined up with each other which is quite a cool look but I didn't think I particularly needed it for my card. So I'm placing that honeycomb stamp in my mini misty here. I'm just going to prep my hexagon with an anti-static powder tool, brush off the excess powder and then I can ink up the stamp with clear embossing and watermark ink. This is a clear sticky ink so that the embossing powder that I add on top is going to stick to it. So I'm just going to stamp that down. And then keeping that hexagon on the piece of paper, I've added it with a little bit of removable adhesive. I'm going to apply some gold embossing powder. The benefit of having it on this piece of paper is so that when I go to add the embossing powder and heat set it, not only is my fingers not going to get burnt <laughs> from the heat tool, it also means that I'm not going to smudge any of the embossing powder. So I'm just going to heat set that embossing powder until it's completely melted, trying not to overheat it. And then I did the exact same thing for the other two hexagons, the smaller ones. So I've got all three here. I'm just placing it back on that sheet with the double sided kind of removable adhesive on the back. And then I'm going to add some texture and some different layers onto these pieces. So I'm taking a large ink blending brush and I'm blending on lemon drop reactive ink. I'm kind of focusing most of that color towards the edges and having it a little bit lighter in the middle, but I am trying to be quite random with it. I do want some areas to be lighter and some to be darker. And then I'm going to go in with Pumpkin Pie Mid-Tone Shadow Ink. And I'm just going to add that mainly towards the edges. One of the hexagons I did add a little bit in the middle. But again, I'm trying to be fairly random with it. But this colour works really nicely with the others. And it gives more of like that honey look. I'm then going to take the Hero Wax in gold and as I open this it's just the most loveliest sight. It's kind of like liquid gold. It's so pretty. It kind of makes you want to eat it like frosting. Definitely don't eat it but it does make you feel like that you want to like ice a cake with it. It's just so lovely. I'm going to take some of it on my finger here and I'm just going to rub it into the edges of these honeycomb pieces. 
This is going to give some kind of like metallic look onto these hexagons and although I'm mainly sort of going over where I added the pumpkin pie ink, it's going to make it more of a metallic look and I just, I really liked the effect in the end. This wax can give texture. I'm kind of keeping it quite flat, just I really just wanted the kind of metallic properties from it but you absolutely could dab it on with a palette knife or you could just kind of dab it with your finger or anything you wanted to and it would dry with that texture but like I said I'm keeping it fairly flat I really just wanted the metallic look from it you can't really see it a huge amount from if you're looking straight on but if you tilt it in the light it's just so pretty and I'll do that a little bit later so I'm just adding a small amount of that like I said mainly around the edges some of it I'm sort of dipping my finger a little bit further into these hexagon honeycomb pieces and this is what I think is mixed media so for me mixed media although technically it is mixing two mediums so for example ink and embossing powder I do think of it more as creating layers adding texture and things like that to me it's more of a look rather than the literal sense of mixing mediums together <laughs> it's technically not that but that's how I think of it and I'm guessing other people probably think of it in that way as well but what I'm doing is I'm still doing the kind of adding textures different mediums but I'm doing it in more of a concentrated way so the rest of my card is very clean and simple but these hexagons have more of that mixed media type look I wanted to splatter some of the wax as well so I'm taking the water mist bottle and just spraying that on a craft sheet and then I'm going to take some of that wax with my finger and just add some of that onto that craft sheet as well. I'm then going to take a really inexpensive brush and I'm just going to mix the two together. You don't want to add too much water to this. Some of the wax did kind of bubble up a little bit into pieces as you can see there but you just keep mixing and it does mix really lovely and it kind of just again just looks I think it just looks so pretty I'm not even a fan of gold to be honest with you but it just looks so lovely kind of mixed up like this and then I'm going to take it on that brush and I'm just going to splatter it on those hexagon pieces you do want to clean that brush quite quickly however this is water based so it will clean off really nicely with just water but it does dry also quite quickly so um, you do want to have a little bit of speed I'm then taking the bee here from the Sweet as Honey set and I'm going to stamp it onto some deluxe smooth white cardstock. So just placing that in the mini misty again and then I can ink that up with intensified black ink. I'm stamping that twice so that I get a really nice dark impression. And then I'm going to colour it with Copic markers. So I generally go from darkest to lightest with my colouring but if I've got a colour that's a lot darker than the other ones I tend to start with kind of like a mid-tone and then add the darker on top. So this is Y17 and then for my darkest shade is YR27 so I like to have that base of that slightly lighter colour. I go in with the darker colour and then kind of try and sort of blend that out a little bit and then go back in with that mid-tone which is the, again the Y17 and then finish up with my lighter shades. So I'm focusing the majority of the colour on either side of this bee. I really love these bees, they've got quite a nice area to do some colouring if you wanted to but I am keeping it really quite simple here. And then for the wings, I'm just using some blue shades, although they'd probably be kind of like transparent or grey. I quite like adding blue onto B's wings. It just kind of brightens it up a little bit, I think. So I'm kind of just sort of blending that blue out to white. And then I can take the Sweet As Honey frame cuts and I'm going to grab the new metal snippers. I haven't actually used this die set yet, so I'm just going to cut those two apart. And then I can place that die on top of my image and adhere that down with some low tack tape. And then I can run that through my die cutting machine. 
and I've got that cute little bee. I've then off camera heat embossed the hello sentiment from the art journal messages set and as you can see it does have a border around it but I just cut that off with a craft knife and a ruler just because I just wanted the sentiment on its own to be a little bit smaller. I've then die cut two more layers of the hexagon infinity dies from that same deluxe smooth white cardstock and I'm just layering them on top of each other using precision glue. I'm then going to bring in the ones that I did the heat embossing and the ink blending and the wax on top and so that I can place them on top and that's just going to give some added dimension onto these hexagon pieces. I didn't really want to add them with foam tape so it's quite nice just to have those layers of cardstock just for that added dimension. I've then got an A2 sized card base. So this is a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. And I've made that from the same deluxe smooth white cardstock. And I've just got my hexagon pieces here and my B and my sentiment. So I can figure out exactly where I want them to be placed before I adhere anything down. So I'm taking some more of that precision glue and I'm just grabbing my reverse grip tweezers here so that I can place that down onto the card base. And what I love is that they do really grip onto it so that you can kind of move it around and see exactly where you want it to be placed before you place it down. I'm then just bringing in my T-square ruler here just to make sure that that's straight before I adhere the others on top. But I like that with this glue you've got some wiggle time so that you can make sure things are straight before they adhere completely. So just sticking that other one down there. And then that one on top. And you absolutely could add some splatter or something like that to this card but then to me it doesn't feel quite as clean and simple. I really like having that white space around those hexagons but those hexagons themselves actually do have quite a lot of detail with all of those different mediums on top. So I've added some thin foam tape onto the back of the sentiment here and then I can just place that down. And then I've added some more thin foam tape onto the back of the bee, just on the top part of the body and the wings where it's going to overlap those hexagons. And then again, I can just press that down. I'm then going to take just two little pieces of the thin foam tape and layer those on top of each other so that they're too high and then I can just pop that underneath his little bottom there just to make sure that his bottom is supported on the card as well. And then to finish off, I'm going to add some black enamel dots from the Neutrals Hero Hues enamel dots set. And I'm just going to add a few around the hexagons and the bees. Or the bee singular, I should say, not plural. And I think it just kind of brings in a little bit of that black as well. I quite like the sort of black, white and then the kind of different shades of the yellow as well. And I changed my mind on that one. I wanted one that was slightly larger. And so that is the card finished. I really like the added dimension on the card. And then I'll tilt it here in the light and you can see that hero wax, both the splatters and where I kind of rubbed it in with my finger. I think it just looks really pretty and it really just adds something onto this clean and simple card. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar on YouTube and also over on the Hero Arts blog. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.